Hey, Susie. Hey, Claudio. Do you know what? We're in a different spot today. <laughs> I know. We're, we're actually on our way. Yeah. Where are we going? We're just driving. in the northern beaches yeah so we thought we'd do something a little bit different today let's do it from the cart so rather than being in our usual gym or in a studio we thought hey let's let's, let's mix let's it up a little, mix bit, it up a little bit, bit for our tribe at Asian Republic so let's get in the car let's talk about something that I suppose we're actually seeing a client too yeah we are you're, <laughs> so let's be honest. that's why she's okay, sort of dressed okay. up <laughs> yeah, we are seeing a client okay. but basically um, I suppose the topic I already want to bring up at the moment is like you know, agents that are working in a marketplace, yes. but there seems to be like a really good dominant agent that yes. has got like all the market share. And how do you ha- compete you, against a big how do you, fish? Yeah, how do you compete against a big fish, right? <laughs> like, how do you how do you break in? How do you like you know start to get some traction and, and and start to build your market share yourself? And especially if you don't have a huge budget, like it's really yeah. great when you're a dominant agent and you've got you know market share and you've got a lot of money coming in, so you can put out lots of ads and you can be everywhere. How do you compete against that when maybe you don't have the budget, you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the contacts, you don't have the network, and you haven't been in the area for long enough? Exactly. So step number one, I would recommend is get to know your community yeah find out where do people congregate in your community where you can actually get in front of them and get to know the key players in your community so when I talk about key players I'm talking about you know hairdressers local cafe owners what else interior designers solicitors you know you could actually you could look at your mortgage brokers the local gym the people where they go and train you know like how do you get involved with that community Mm -hmm. so you can they can start to get to know who you are right so become a local so you want to think about where are all the local hangouts and how do i become a local as well as doing things like you know go and do boot camps and use the local personal trainer get involved in the community correct number two don't forget like a traditional method things like letterbox drops or door knocking or cold calling just to start to build your name because there's three things that I've always found is you want to you know when you when you call someone they want to know who you are what you do and what your offer is right right? and when you start doing things consistently it creates trust and builds trust do you think of most agents when they're in a marketplace right they're they're not basically dropping out all the time they're like Mm -hmm. sort of doing it when I need a listing I'll go and do a letterbox drop that doesn't work work, right or I'll pick up the phone when I need a listing or I need a lead okay or I'll go and door knock rather than try and think about like oh, how am I going to do this consistently over the next 18 months because it does take that long yes. to start to build your name and your profile in an area but one of the key things is trust equals or consistency equals trust it definitely That's what does and then trust equals client Correct. so the other thing that I'd recommend is and you know obviously I personally haven't done door knocking but to go and meet people so if someone's door knocking can you give them some dialogue on how they could talk to somebody or if they're in front of somebody especially that person's like no I've already got an agent I work with insert celebrity agent for that area yeah what would be some of the dialogue so if I, you were you were an agent and you yep. were talking to me yeah and I'm like no 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 sorry Claudio I've already got an agent I think what would you say to me? Get relevant with your clients in your area. So yeah. give them something that's relevant. So, for example, just start off with a just a simple just sold. I would just door knock you, Susie, and just go knock, knock, you know, hi, my name's Claudia. I'm the local agent in the area. Hi, Claudia. How are you going? Look, just want to reach out to some of the neighbours today and just inform them of a great sale that occurred down the road. And look, that sale has impacted values in the local area. And uh, some neighbours are curious to know the new value of their home. Um, just wondering, would you like for us to pop in while I'm seeing some of your neighbours this week or next week? Well, I actually already have an agent that I use. Oh, fantastic. All right. That's great. And um, and are you looking at selling at the moment or are you considering selling? Well, I haven't really thought about it, but, you know, you're saying that there are some prices, like the prices yeah. have gone up. So, yeah. But, I don't know, like... Have, and it, yeah, like, prices have gone up. That agent that you have seen, um, or have you seen him or you just No, I haven't, think... but I just know we've used him in the past. Okay, well, look, I suppose there's no harm for me just to maybe pop in. That's all it is. And, you yeah. know, and 
give you an idea of prices in the area and I'm sure once you do decide to sell one thing I do say is probably get three agents to come through your home not just myself but Dejan you're talking about maybe one other one and see what they're offering so would you mind if I maybe also send you some tips around when thinking of selling yeah that would be really is helpful that, is that great yep. would you mind if I could just get your information sure okay great so I, I think like you know offer something where you're coming from a place of help rather than always the sell bit because sometimes we try and aim to try and get that appraisal there so maybe say hey would you like me to send you like some tips around you know when selling your home or mm. how to choose an agent or how to repair the home for sale whatever it may be but you know try and keep it casual not too forceful and then maybe next time reconnect again to get back in the door and the really important thing is when you're listening to this when you're handling objections especially when the objection is and it's not really an objection but when the objection is that they already utilize somebody else that they really like and you know I've done this in a number of different businesses there are really key strategies that you have to really fo focus on so number one is this never ever slam the person that they like yeah. so I've seen people do this in, when I've done business coaching where they've gone and said yeah but that competitor or that person so let's insert the agent that agent you know they've got a reputation for this or they're not very good at this or I hear they charge really high commission Uh uh. never ever do that because what you say about somebody else speaks more about you you than it does about them so you never want to slam the, the person that they like because they've already got a relationship it's kind of like if you had a best friend and somebody came up to you and said I don't like your best friend you're not going to betray your best friend you'll be no. going to the person who says I don't like your best friend get the heck out of here so what you want to say is that's really great that you've got that great relationship with an agent but like Claudia was saying you know I'd recommend always having a look and getting some different perspectives so you can make sure that you're getting the best result now you know when I've done other business coaching that was one of the things to do is to say oh okay what did you like about your agent and then you can even ask the question you know I'm just really interested is there anything that they could do maybe differently that would really maximize a result for you so you're not coming as an attack you're actually asking questions which then can potentially give you an in because they might say you know what it would have been really good if they gave us more of an update or some tips or something like yeah. that that's when you can say well how about I how about I send them out look I understand that you're working with that agent not a problem how can I send that value out because then suddenly you're building the relationship without destroying another relationship exactly yep. okay the next bit I would do yep. is actually think about building my social media platforms yes really starting again keeping things that are relevant to my community <laughs> we from, got some bumps we certainly do <laughs> from you know Facebook LinkedIn you know Twitter Instagram but again I would say you know it's not about just standing in front of a signboard and saying, hey, we sold this, look at my new vendors and no. bought this property. Start thinking about creating some content buckets and some themes. Would, yes. would you agree with Definitely. social media? And you want to make sure, again, because we're saying, how do you compete against someone local? You want to be showcasing how local you are. Yeah. Because people want to know that you know the local environment. It's not about advertising all of that. It's about how embedded you are in your local community. So you'd want to have photos of you sitting at a really popular local cafe. You you want to have boot camp photos because again think about what your clients like usually most people are into health so if you're going to do that have that with a local personal trainer that's got a, try a following because then when people see your photos and they associate you to the local cafe the local personal trainer the local hairdresser the local butcher the local whatever then they start thinking that you are part of the community so that's the way to up level that plus because people already know who that person is they'll be like oh my gosh I like that they'll like and they'll engage yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The next thing I would do is build a digital platform. Yes. I wanted to go and build my website for the area. So building a website, for example, like, I don't know, let's just say if you're called Mike Smith. I don't know if there's a Mike Smith out there, but it might be <laughs> MikeSmith.com.au. Mm -hmm. And it would be like the local agent in Smithville. And I would start really pushing around thinking about your Google Analytics. Yes. Google words are so important. If you want, you know, traffic to flow towards you, start building like, for example, how to sell your home in Smithville exactly. or how to prepare your home in Smithville. Start building some video blogs, start creating some written blogs. Really great content. Yeah, really good content. And then you might say, here are the six best tips to prepare your home for this spring yes. and getting it ready. In Smithfield. In Smithfield, because correct. Because again, use your local community. And then finally, I think the big thing is you've got to have the right perspective. The reason why there are star agents that have a dominant share in a marketplace is because they've taken the time to do it. You need time in the saddle. I see too many people who are like, I want to be the celebrity agent in this area. Yeah. And then after about three months, they're moaning because they're like, well, I did three months of letterbox dropping. I haven't got anything. Well, you know what? The guy's been there for 40 years. 
So yeah. you've just got to keep consistent and get involved. Yes, you can fast track that by doing yeah. some of the things that we've talked about, but it's about being consistent. One thing I always recommend people is you can start complaining when you've done it consistently for two years. Yes, correct. But I can tell you if you do it consistently for two years, you will get traction yeah. as, if, as long as you're doing it well, of course. So no complaining until after two years. If you've done it consistently and you've been dominating, you've been doing all of the hustle, and then after two years it's still not working, then you can have a bit yeah. of a moan about it. If you, if you start moaning before two years, yeah. I'm going to come and punch you in the face. No! <laughs> But you know the funny, the funniest thing, the funniest thing about this is we're talking about this. Think about it a little bit like if you're getting your body in shape. Mm. You know, I was actually talking to a client this morning about, and she said, you know, her um, her director was saying we're not performing as well. We've got to change the strategy, and she said, no, we're not changing the strategy because here's the reason why. We've only just started the strategy, and strategy takes time. And this is what I think is really interesting. I said it's kind of like when you're getting fit. You might do just say you want to get. I don't know, ready for summer since summer's coming mm. and you want a bikini body. You don't go to like CrossFit for three weeks and then go, my body's not there, CrossFit mustn't be working, I'm now going to do Pilates and then do Pilates for a week and go, my body's not there, I'm now going to do yoga. Mm. You don't do that. What you do is you go, this is the plan, I'm going to stick with this and yeah. I'm going to give my plan time to actually get the result. Exactly. And don't be like most people when they're starting like an area, they'll go, I, I might do this oh, and I might do or that. I'll do that. This is about doing this and that. Yes. This is the whole thing. Don't start picking and choosing. Do this and that. That's the mindset you got to talk. Mm -hmm. Speaking of mindset, Susie, what sort of psychology when someone's going in there thinking, oh my God, well, I don't have any track record. I don't have results in my area. Like, you know, I'm going into this listing presentation. They're probably going to say, well, you know, what have you sold in there? And I haven't sold anything. What sort of psychology can a new agent, mm -hmm. you know, in an area or an agent where another agent dominates <coughs> to go in there and sort of like own that space, right? Like exactly. going in there with that confidence confidence and conviction like I'm the best agent for the job you've, so talk to just, me you've just highlighted it oh there you it's go starting first and foremost <laughs> with identity I am the best at this and if your identity is going no you're not you're only new then you want to say what is great about me being new it's about finding the positive stamina with where you're at so just mm. say you're new you can say okay I might not have sold as much as this guy but I'll tell you what I'm hungrier mm. because he you know he's he's kind of got lazy in fact you can say this in your head because he's got so many listings and blah Blah, blah 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 but I'm hungry I'm gonna go the extra mile suddenly now the fact that you're new is the, a strength rather than uh, a non strength, strength I guess. Great. the other thing too is to say how can I add value you know what I think it is get over yourself if you're sitting there feeling sorry for yourself and oh, I can't do this and blah 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 guess what you've made it all about you yeah. and you're actually in a business where it's not about you so what you want to start doing is how can I serve people how can I make this better for them how can I add value so turn the negative stuff that's going in your head into yes. a question so just say you've got something like I don't have market share mm. change it to how can I get more market, market share? share I don't feel confident how do I become confident? I don't have the experience. How can I get the experience? Change those negative statements into a question and then answer them in an empowered way. Yes. Come up with an empowered story. I was talking to an agent yesterday. Yes. He's like, you know, he, 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 he was a gun maybe 20 years ago, but now he's like going, Claudia, I'm 67. I still have a passion for real estate and love it, but I think people are thinking that I'm too old. And I said, you know what, Michael? You've got to be thinking today's 67 is the new 37. Exactly right. So walk in there like you 37 when you were killing it 20 years ago rather than walking in there feeling going and feeling like you're getting judged and going oh he's too old well, now you know maybe what? he's not that that sort of guy you've got a track record you've got results but start changing your thinking and going you know what I'm walking in there the new 67 is the new 37 right and your vibration and your energy is going to change immediately and when that changes guess what people are going to feel it even though you're 67 and you're thinking you're 57, you may not say that verbally, but they're going to feel it non-verbally. And the other thing too is, I mean, what a why cool see it? Why <laughs> see? I, know that's a, I love a Porsche. Why see it as a negative? You know what? Don't try to be the 37 year old and I'm gonna I'm, we're gonna have a little controversy here mm. don't try to be the 37 why not say why is 67 even better than any 37 year old out there yeah, yeah you know yeah. why not own the thing that you are yeah. I think that's the big thing own what you've got like 
say, okay, I'm 67. What's awesome about being 67? Well, I've got wisdom, I've got maturity, experience, experience, you know, results, what, results track record, track record. Also, too, I'm trustworthy because you know you see these young mature sale guys, and they're a little bit like I'm yeah. not saying this, guys, but the young guys that are watching this, <laughs> I'm just saying change the psychology. You got these young guys, they're a little bit Yahoo, but you know what? I'm rock solid. I'm 67 years old. Rock that thing. Own who you are, and that's what I mean about asking the empowered question. How is whatever that crazy psychology is? How is it actually a benefit? How is being 67 a benefit? Correct. Correct. Yep. So. We've pretty much talked about psychology. We've talked about, you know, traditional stuff in the car dance. We've talked about social media. We've talked about basically, you know what? If you've got a dominant agent in your marketplace, how are you going to build market share? How are you going to build a profile? At the end of the day, it's really simple. It's up to you and no one else, right? But allow at least one to two years to get that traction and Mm -hmm. get that market share that you're looking for. Rather, start thinking why it's not working, start figuring out how I'm gonna make it work. Exactly. Yeah, all right, so. Did you enjoy this little piece? I did. It was nice to be in the car. <laughs> exactly. You guys starting to slow down, so I Do you think like we're probably arrived. Look at that. Look oh at that. How cool is that? It's Hustle Agent Republic. Hustle Agent Republic. And that's just me. So I don't know why we're showing phones. Anyway, okay. and go and enjoy. Have fun. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Agent Agent Republic. Republic. Bye.